Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Welcome, traders, to the live webinar with Adam Markets. Happy that you're here. I hope that you had a, a good weekend and are ready to take a look at the charts with me. We'll be reviewing uh, Forex, CFDs, commodities, stock indices in this webinar. And I want to focus on three things that are the main topic, Fibonacci, fractals, and moving averages. Uh, to find uh, to analyze and find setups that I think are interesting at least. All right, before we do that though, as always, two disclaimers. The first one explains the fact that this webinar is shown to a global audience but may not be suitable for everyone. Please visit animalmarketsglobal.com, select your country of residence and contact an appropriate entity to find out if this webinar is suitable for you. Second of all, Please note that trading for exchange and global financial markets in general are considered high risk. Please seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. This webinar is for informational and educational purposes only. By continuing watching this webinar, you agree with this disclaimer and you are also aware of the risk involved when trading. All right, thank you for your attention on that. We're going to take a look at the charts in just a second. I just wanted to give you a quick uh, introduction the webinar is hosted uh, through by admiralmarkets.com so uh, after the webinar i uh, recommend to take a look at the website because there are a lot of good things that you can find here not only how you can trade not only uh, what instruments you might be trading or which platform you traded obviously that all is there but also uh, analytics education and promotion so there's a lot more uh, to this website uh, than let's say the, the info you need how to trade and, and etc which is important obviously and you can take a look at that to see uh, and how you can set up an account but uh, it, there's more than that and I'm sure that once you discover anal analysis these tools like market heat map for instance and our articles and and our courses that uh, this will give you a lot of good info, uh, not only how to start, but even if you already have some experience, how to, to improve. So uh, I just wanted to make you aware of that. And uh, with no longer ado, let's take a look at those charts. I'm sure that that is the main focus, of course, So of this webinar. So... Uh, basically, yesterday uh, I mentioned in my video, maybe you found it on the website already and, and you looked at it with regard to the euro, pound, and dollar yen, that the uh, euro and pound are, I think, still bullish structures because we have a trend, we have maybe some small pause here, but ultimately upside is likely to continue either after a retracement and a bounce at support or as a continuation. All right, let me review. There are some trend lines here. All of them have been broken, so we can get rid of them. It's not so relevant anymore. And here you can clearly see how everything is nicely aligned to the upside on the daily chart with higher highs, higher lows. And uh, yes, we had some bearish candles, but I think it was just a pause. On a four hour chart, you can see a bit better, very strong momentum. And the oscillator is confirming that there's no divergence present. And uh, basically, this was building a consolidation, which is typically just a pause within the continuation. So we have clear uptrend, we have clear momentum. This is correction. Typically, the upside continues once we have that. So um, how does it continue? Well, price could either make a dip and kind of retest support, which I think would have been bouncing spots, or it can make an immediate breakout. It could do both. It really 50-50 depends, um, I guess, on, on how the market behaves, what kind of orders are, are flowing uh, in. And, you know, that, that will have some impact whether, whether price will, will make that small dip or not. Ultimately, though, the structure is bullish, and it doesn't really matter in, in that sense, uh, I you know the, the expectation is that price will continue higher. Uh, the invalidation we said yesterday is like the 50, 61.8 zone. 
here. Ultimately, these three fibs were going to act as support. Price already bounced at the 38.2 fib. So if it would have broken this trend line, it could have gone to the 50 or 61 and then it bounced there. It didn't. Now it's looking like it's breaking out. So let's zoom in even more so. And uh, this is looking like a breakout candle. So that retracement is, doesn't seem likely. In an hourly chart, it does actually look like uh, price is already breaking. So for those that maybe traded on a lower time frame, maybe you're in that trade. For those that are waiting on the four-hour chart, you're still waiting. And it will depend a little bit on how this candle closes because if it's a good candle close near the high, something like what it looks like now, that would be a good breakout candle. If the candle disappears and the candle closes with a close all the way down at 122.50, right, or 55, then that would be a big wick at the top. That indicates that the bulls are not in control. So this particular breakout candle is important, I think. If we do get a breakout candle, in my view at least, an entry could be made upon the close, stop loss. I would go with below these bottoms here, right? Below that. Other option could be for price to make a little bit of retracement of that candle, halfway that candle, back to these tops, for instance. It could also be possible that there will be some retracement during Asian session, for instance. Uh, it, it is possible. It doesn't have to be, though. It, it might not. It, uh, that's you know difficult to to judge. Uh, we could look at lower time frames to see, you know, is there any reason why maybe some retracement could occur of that four-hour candle, considering the fact that it is close to the end of London. You know, a retracement might might be a, you know, a, a possibility that uh, could make sense. But it depends. It doesn't have to be. But with with as I said, Asian session end of London ahead of us, uh, or I should say, first New York afternoon new york and then asian it is not wouldn't it be so strange to see a little bit of a pullback before upside it doesn't have to be much a little bit halfway that candle wouldn't be too strange so that does look like a breakout the breakout target due to many reasons i think is 124 and then 125 and then perhaps even 125 25 125 50. i right, won't dive into that but that's just my using fibs. That's what I think are uh, the main main targets. So this is looking interesting, looking good for a bullish break at this moment. The candle close, I think, would confirm that. All right. This has lasted, you know, has been a pretty long triangle, but seems to be finally finishing the the pound dollar and this is something that uh Nana and i traded ourselves and also communicated to you know our traders that um follow us on our uh live telegram channel in fact and, and but you know if you're not on that channel that's also of course fine you could have seen already a heads up of our potential trade through um, my wave analysis, maybe if you would have seen that maybe in the morning by any chance, I already talked about the pound dollar wave three hits 140 resistance level, but if you didn't dive into that article, you would have seen that uh, here, I was looking for uh, a retracement to, to these fibs. I'm not sure how well you see that at this moment, but Uh, let's see. All right, but let's go back to our charts here and take a look at the one hour chart. All right, so where did it go? 139.15. So let's put that fib I had on that chart. I think it was from here to here. And voila. All right, you see 50. Percent hit close to the 61, close to that Keltner channel as well. One hour, good one hour candlestick pattern right there. And, uh, you know, that was a candlestick formation that that made sense. 
and indicated a bullish bounce at those at those flavors that were anticipated expected to be bounce uh, area so you could have seen that in the wave analysis earlier today and this is something that Ned and I traded uh, as well live is, is this bounce and we did get the bounce the continuation and for the moment we're locking in a profit we have trail stop loss at this moment and aiming for 140 50 ish I think is uh, is the next target we have in mind at this moment is there any trade right now I you know obviously from my perspective best trades were at the bounce spot or after price confirmed the bounce which is like a candlestick pattern here for instance or a break of these candle highs now um uh, I don't think it's a good spot because it's a runaway train, as I call it. So in my view, entries here are kind of like chasing the trade and pursuing it a little bit late from my point of view. It doesn't mean that no trades are possible anymore in the pound dollar, but I think it would require at the very minimum some kind of retracement of this candle uh, maybe on a 50-minute chart, some kind of a bull flag like this, for instance, that could take price you know, back to a retracement level. Because the next target to think about is 140.50 already. And so if, if I were to put a FIB from, let me check, maybe from here to here, right? Uh, a retracement to the 38.50 FIB area, 139.85, 139.95, Like that uh, might still make sense for a bounce for one more push up towards that 140.50. Now, if it keeps pushing immediately towards 140.50, uh, I don't know. Might have to be might have to keep an eye on this one hour chart in that case and look for a flag on the one hour chart. Because then if we get a flag on a one-hour chart, then we might get a, a, a break above 140.50 that could go to the next targets. Probably, I don't know by heart, but probably um, 141.50, 142. So yes, for the moment, if you're in this trade, I think it was the best. If you're not, I don't know. It is... A little bit late, maybe a little bit pullback. If we get a 50-minute flag or so towards this zone and then bounce, could be one more follow-through. Otherwise, if it goes to 140.50, then I, I would like to see some flag on the hourly chart again. Um, Dalian is not behaving as I expected, actually, because I thought that this could be uh, a bigger kind of bullish breakout. Uh, but it failed to break. And we actually got a break or to the upside, I should say. We got a break to the downside. And this does look like that price is not bouncing as much at the 110 level as I expected. I was pretty confident that this should, get, should go to the upside. But uh, I think that this setup might turn into a loss. I'm in along myself. Um, our, our win rate, Leonard and I, is, is about the seven, a little bit higher. I mean, it fluctuates. Some weeks it's, it's above 90, other weeks it's uh, 60, other weeks it's 75. But the average around this, this 75 mark, 75% wins. A little bit higher at the moment, but okay. Uh, but I think that this is going to probably be a loss, unless, unless it miraculously bounces off this double bottom. Who knows? Uh, that, that's what I would need. Uh, if it does break through that bottom, though, then yes, there's probably going to be more follow through, I would say, uh, if it breaks below 110 and the S1 for a move down lower. How I would trade it, I'm not sure yet. I guess I would probably need to see a break and then I would need to see a bear flag and a break of that flag. So it will take still some some time. All right, Ozzy is behaving a little bit, a little bit abnormal 
in the sense that this rise is continuous, no retracements, just one straight rocket there, one straight arrow, um, or whatever you want to call it. You know, you know what I mean. So, and the resistance zone is close, and I, I'm still looking for price to make a retracement back to, for instance, just a simple retracement, maybe to to this zone here. Or, or we can put a fib from here to here. Anywhere in here. So if we get two bearish candles up in here, uh, it, it could be a, a, retra a reversal. I, I don't know if I would trade it, to be honest, because there might be better pairs to trade. And I might want to risk my, um, my trading capital on different pairs so i'm not sure but if today's candle breaks and closes below these support levels and the weekly pivot point it's it's now a little bit above it it hasn't closed yet today's candle closed below that weekly pivot point like this and a retracement could we could get that bigger retracement there on the Aussie. But really, I'm not sure if I want to trade it. I'll still check if there's something better. Kiwi still pushing ahead higher. I don't see any particular trade that I, I like at this point, at least. Dollar cat triangle two. If it breaks the triangle, it will still need to deal with, I would say, these purple supportive resistance levels. A little bit tight space here. I still prefer the upside. Downside, I would only really find interesting to trade probably if. If a daily candle can break through this low, probably, and yeah, a bearish close below the this bottom here at uh, one one twenty four. So daily candle close below one twenty four, and four hour breakout candle that can close above one twenty five. Four hour bullish candle, daily bearish candle. Uh, let me take a look at the Eurocad. Aru, Aru, uh, San, Sandai is asking. I, I hope I pronounced that correctly. I'm not sure. Let's see, Eurocad. Ah, great. Yes, I will use I will use Dorian indeed. That's that's easier for me indeed. Let's see. Mm -mm -mm. Definitely knocking uh, here at resistance. Uh, I think a breakout to the upside is becoming a lot more likely at this moment because it has seemingly it completed an ABC here, higher highs, higher lows. It's starting to look like an ascending wedge. 
good momentum to the upside sideways movement like this there's not sh i'm not sure about the entry exact entry though at this moment what i would do at least i do think that the bullish break is likely but i'm not not very sure what could be a good entry at this moment I would maybe choose if I were to, I'm, I'm not an active EuroCAD trader, only if I really see something very interesting. But if I had to choose, I would maybe just wait on this daily candle and to see if uh, this daily candle can 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 close bullishly, can close above this purple line here at. 153-ish. If it does, then uh, I would maybe look for tomorrow for uh, a small retracement of that today's candle. So if price makes one more upside, that makes a flag like that. I I would probably look for some some entry around this zone, I guess. Um, so that would look like this. All right, bullish candle like this. Look for a little bit of a retracement halfway that candle, and continuation. That I think uh, would be my trading plan. Uh, I mean, we can. I will keep it. I will keep it in mind as well for myself. But as I said, I'm not a very big EuroCAD uh, trader unless I really see something uh, very interesting. Maybe this is maybe this is interesting enough because it, it could be a it could be a big breakout. It could and it could break here because as I said, there's good momentum. This is already the fourth attempt to break out, so. But I would like to see a good, some volatility candle that could push through those levels, uh, and I, I would that would need require price to close above 140, 153, maybe even rather one, above 153.20, probably. Already, uh, Urien still desperately stuck between support and resistance. No change there. Uh, I think that it is a little bit tricky, but ultimately, I was expecting Urien to break to the upside, but the dollar yen is now breaking to the downside, so we we don't have that break as yet. Uh, I think that our I see that in the sense that there's momentum and sideways movement, overall uptrend, look at the moving averages aligned. Uh, I have no particular trade idea. I, this is not something I've traded myself though, uh, yet in a while. So, I mean in a while, I mean like I'm talking about uh, this week and last week, for instance, you know, not, not, not something uh, longer necessarily. I don't remember by heart, but, um, and that has to do with this range. I do think a breakout is likely to the upside, but maybe waiting for a daily candle here that could break and close again above this zone, uh, maybe the best. Uh, I mean, if you were lucky enough in the sense that you saw this triangle and you saw a bullish candle here and you took a long in there, great job, right? That is a bounce trade, in fact, at the bottom of a, of a pattern. 
Uh, I didn't talk about that because it already happened. So it really doesn't make sense to to talk about what something happened in the, in the past. But just to give you an example uh, is that uh, if you are trading bounce trades, uh, that candlestick patterns or candle reactions in these zones uh, can sometimes be potential setup, interesting setups within a range, within a pattern, within these or at these trend lines. But this is something that happened already. So at this moment, right here, right now, price is now very close to, to halfway this pattern again. Hence, I don't think it really, maybe if there's a hook back here like this, like it, like it did here, that could still be a bouncing spot. Obviously, if it breaks through this bottom, then it's not bullish and there could be a bearish breakout. But for the moment, it seems more likely that if it does hook back, it could make a bounce to the stop again. Then what will happen here? I don't know. It once again is a break or bounce spot. If it breaks, I would look on the daily chart. So, and this hook back is more for the four hour chart. And this is for the daily chart. Alrighty. Uh, you're odd. So this is something uh, that I'm trading to the upside at this moment. And uh, that has to do with the fact that there we go. Um, I was already bullish on it in the sense that I was expecting a bigger ABC. I, maybe you remember from last week, and I was saying that this bull flag right could break or it could bounce at fibs. So the flag did break, but to the opposite side, to the downside, rather than to the upside. That didn't happen. The downside break stopped at the 61.8 fib, triple bottom at the 61.8 fib. All right. So we had upside momentum, ABC, respect for the 61.8 pattern, reversal pattern at the FIB. And then on top of that, we broke the counter trend, or maybe just simply said resistance trend line here. So that's when I entered, when that broke. So I'm up a few pips, moving a little bit my way. Nothing spectacular though as yet. So. Let's see, but um, for the moment, I guess any hook back could still be a bouncing spot for upside. So if I would be not in that trade myself, then I, that's what I would probably look for is for price to, to get back about halfway here like this and look for a bounce. You're in New Zealand, keeping its head low. In fact, uh, breakout, second breakout here typically goes further than the first, as you can see, first breakout, second breakout. So it, it's possible that the Euro New Zealand could fall and, and your odd looks more bullish. And it, and it could be the difference purely based on, uh, on the odd in New Zealand. We can take a look at the odd New Zealand in just a second. But yes, this could fall down to the next target, which is 78.6 fib. I am in, in a short as well on this one. Uh, I know that's opposite of the euro odd, but this is an older trade. It's a break even at the moment, and I'm hoping it could fall uh, down to these, these targets. Um, at this particular point, you know, if, you're, if, if anyone is not in that trade, I'm not sure if it's worth it at this moment. Uh, maybe, maybe, a, I'm not sure, uh, maybe a candle that could break through this fractal, small retracement, pull back on a lower time frame, like a 50 minute chart, and then a continuation. Maybe, that could be one way of maybe, maybe trading this small little zone right in here between the 61.8 
and 78.6 fib there. But it's small. It could make sense. Wait for push price to break, push the below this with a candle, hook back on lower time frame and continue. Pound yen, we prefer to pound dollar. Pound yen is making a similar uh, move, but uh, the yen side of things was less clear. I, I'm not sure um, at this point whether it's worth trading. If anyone did trade, you know, there was a good candle yesterday. So anyone who who traded. A bounce near yesterday's low, great job. Right? You can move it to break even or you can take some profit perhaps. Right right here, I'm not sure if it's good to trade either way at this moment. It's that resistance. It, it might make more sense probably for price to either make a hook back and fail to break this bottom and show another bounce potential there. Or, or it makes a flag. Or it, it breaks and makes a flag or it, it unexpectedly falls strongly and then makes a bear flag. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that I don't think that this spot is necessarily a good spot to trade, either up or down. I would skip it at the moment and just wait for more candles because I, I, I don't see any advantage of trading it here, not necessarily to the downside, even because it's a resistance, just because, because of the fact that, that we have a bounce and we're in uptrend and it could break above the R1. Uh, it could make, and if it does bounce, it's probably just a smaller bounce. I don't know. It doesn't seem very appealing to me. That's just my uh, my two cents. All right, pound U.S. Uh, pound uh, uh, Australian dollar. Good momentum, sideways zone. Could break out candle here. Price pushing. Nicely after the breakout candle, and look at that breakout candle, right? So, what are the characteristics? Close near the high, very much so. Absolutely, bulls in control because the wick is 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 very small, and I typically measure it. In this case, we don't even have to measure it, but you can see that it's just literally like three pips out of a candle of you know, 83 or so. So it's like 3%, less than 3%. It's a very small wick. So that's bulls in control. Good, good, good size of the candle. Bigger, vo good volatility candle. Definitely bigger than all of these candles. And that's a good too. And it breaks above the resistance. Breaks above these fractals. Breaks above this trend line. Looks like a good breakout candle. So I took the euro odd instead. Rather than the pound out, pound out is doing a little bit better, but I did, you know, I, I didn't, I don't think it makes sense to trade something so similar. Uh, sometimes it, it can, but you want to maybe split the risk so you're not over risking on a similar setup. So I have normal risk on your odd. Other option could have been splitting that normal risk in two and placing it on your odd and pound out, or taking normal risk on pound out. I decided to just stick only on, on the euro odd. But the pound odd, fortunately for me, is doing a little bit better. Uh, this was a good breakout. So anyone who saw that candle, saw the, the pattern, we talked, we did talk about last week, up, sideways, typically it breaks up uh, or it goes up. It could break down and then move up like this or break up immediately, like what we discussed on euro dollar just earlier uh, this webinar. And yeah, that was that. This is this is a good, Good candle and a good example. And the only reason I didn't trade it was because of the euro odd. Maybe some of you are in that trade. Great job. I would put, in that case, a fib from here to here. I would trail stop this current candle low and aim for the minus 61.8 target probably.
right, finally that odd New Zealand, falling quickly indeed. Excuse me. And uh, price is, uh, has broken the straight line and moving fast. And that explains why uh, Euro odd upside is doing well and Euro New Zealand downside is also doing pretty well. And odd New Zealand is explaining that. Um, you might you might wonder why I didn't take the odd New Zealand, but it has everything to do with the fact that Euro New Zealand is an old trade from last week and Euro odd is a new trade from, from today. So that's why. If it breaks the 50 fib and trim and bottom of the channel, there's extension to the 61.8 fib possible. This could also be still a bounce spot. It does depend, I think, a little bit on how today's candle closes. If it closes this bearish, then a follow through and a break is probably is, is a decent chance. All right, uh, the S&P 500 not gaining, getting much uh, backlash from this government shutdown that lasted only maybe a few hours, at, in, seemed very short at least, and uh, everything's back on track from, uh, from that perspective. Uh, things are moving again forward, and so is the S&P 500. So it, it seems like... The same old story, a continuous push, small retracements, and continuations. Um, so anyone who, who might have traded uh, this this break is, is doing well. At the moment, posting a higher high as we speak. If it makes one more retracement like this, it could still be good to look for uh, a bounce more at at a deeper level, like this blue box, for instance. Maybe make it could make an ABC correction like this. All right, oil is is definitely in a in a bullish momentum, no doubt about that. And next target is minus sixty one point eight target at sixty seven twenty five. Looks like a correction, and there was a breakout candle, strong breakout candle, right here. So for the moment. I would not trade it here personally. I would probably rather wait for a bull flag pattern on the hourly chart for the moment. I think uh, DAX. If price does move into this zone one more time, would be a, a bounce potential. 13,400, 13,425 ish. And looking at candlestick patterns there, I think uh, could make sense. All right, there, let's see. Mm -mm. 
Mm -mm. Silver is probably going to break with gold, but when that breakout ha will happen, still waiting. And I think that the price might make some retracement first. Just not sure how deep at this moment it uh, it could go down to 16, for instance, or maybe even uh, if it if it were to go that deep, 15, maybe. And yeah, of course, we'll take a look at gold. Just uh, need to find that chart. Let me take a quick look at some of these pairs that I find and bump along the way. This is Tesla and Facebook. Some of the CFDs that I have open Amazon here. Yeah, this is a uh, pretty, pretty strong, uh, strong climb since two years, three years now. There was a dip two years ago, but since then, pretty much straight up. This is not slowing down because look at all these candles that are above the Keltner channel. If it were to slow down, it would first need to break below the channel, fail to, to break above the channel, and then move down. We're still way far away from that. This is definitely bullish momentum. Uh, let's put some fibs on this swing high here. Close to the next target. Those are interesting targets. So if it if it goes makes a bull flag in this zone, yet again it's probably just setting itself up for one more uh, push higher. But at this point, I think some pattern is needed on a, on a weekly chart, maybe daily chart could be enough. So sometimes the flag, I think, would be good at this moment, at least. It is in a bullish run, something like where you have a correction like this. Alrighty, so that was one of these CFDs that uh, are available. You can check out more by just clicking on, that's the wrong tool, this one, Market Watch. As you probably know and obviously there you go a lot more available right there all right uh, besides uh, these few CFDs that I showed you let me take let me try to find gold I still didn't see that commodity one second ah there it is 
So my vision is still on the table, and that is basically the price will bounce at this trend line and fib uh, for for one more downside. But I don't know. It, it's it's going very slow. It looks like a, a, a correction like this, but then again, it, it could just be a correction also as a triangle and a break to the upside. So it, it might pop up to the R2. So it's a tough, tough spot. It is very close to this resistance zone. But then again, momentum is pretty strong. And uh, uh, there is divergence between these tops, though. Let's see what Angel is saying. 1333 and Angel's wondering about the target. I I would say 1353, but maybe I'm underestimating it, but that's that's my vision at least. And uh, whether, you know, 1333 is Price already bounced from that zone, indeed. Uh, I don't know. I just not a big fan of this 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 particular price movement at this moment. Um, I'm not sure to be honest. I think that if it does break to the downside, it, that it could just make a correction like this. It's diff It's really a tough spot because. If it does break, it, it could actually fall further down to the S2, so that would not be good. Are you already you're already in, in the trade at you opened it at 1333. Aha, got it. Sorry, I misread that. So that is right at this weekly pivot point. That's great. So I think that. That's good because you have some space. Price moved your way already. I don't know where your stop loss is. You can use these bottoms for stop loss or move it to break even. Moving to break even is a little bit risky because it could it could make a retracement now. Uh, you know, but that at least you have no risk on the trade. Other option could be using this bottom or these bottoms. Uh, because if price goes through that, then there could be this breakout that I that I that I fear for gold because it's at bigger resistance. And if it breaks above this resistance, then I think you're good to go to, uh, to those, to the next uh, pivot point, R2 and the trend line there, and the previous top. Now, if it fails to break today, if it fails to break this top here today, one, two, three, four, five, six. It is candle number six. So if today's candle is a doji, I I think that the upside is in danger. If today's candle is a bullish day, it depends a little bit. It it, it could still it's fifty fifty, I would say, still. Uh, but then it would have to break tomorrow, I would say, this this high. If it doesn't tomorrow, then I think the upside is also looking uh, like it's in trouble. So that's that's a time pattern that I look at, and it is running a little bit out of time. It has to, in my view, move up quicker quickly, otherwise. Uh, the the chances of upside are, are not looking as great. All right, so alrighty, so yeah, that was I guess uh, uh, my two cents. How I look at the market. I hope that helped. Uh, I hope that uh, um, things are clear. What I what I what I'm looking at, at least, or what I'm thinking about it. And uh, once again, feel free to check out this analysis. It's for free. Um, most of you probably already know it, but if you're looking at uh, the recording by any chance, 
uh, just go to admiralmarkets.com, click on analytics, find Nenet's technical analysis, my wave analysis. You can find articles in the trader's blog. You can find heat map and, and sent market sentiment are interesting uh, tools. Education, you will find webinars, courses, Zero to Hero, Forex 101, Masters of Trading, more articles. And of course, if you're interested in some of these indicators I was using for my analysis, just go to platforms and download for free the, the MetaTrader Supreme Edition. It has uh, 60 plus extra features besides the ones I showed. Um, uh, that's not all. There are more of that. So you can try that out right there. And uh, that's about it, I guess, for now. Tomorrow, we've got more webinars coming up. Nenet, of course, uh, as well on Wednesdays. Uh, Me too, same time tomorrow. And Thursday, we're going to take a look at an educational topic together. And it is about finding trading setups within price patterns. That's great. Perfect topic. Price patterns are the best, in my view. So uh, I think one of the most interesting topics. So please join us. And uh, above all, uh, good trading. And see you soon. Cheers.